wanted to continue my series on John chapter 6. Uh, taking a look back, you know, at what we've covered, we took a look at the priesthood of Melchizedek, Melchizedek the king of Salem, when Abram uh, was able to defeat the Mesopotamian kings and to recapture Lot. He uh, came back and there was Melchizedek, the king of Salem, to offer God a sacrifice of bread and wine. We also see the uh, Levitical priesthood. Um, after Moses had gone up the mountain, they was delayed. The people went into idolatry and immorality. Uh, but the Levites, or the ones from the tribe of Levi, stood by him, and they became the Levitical priesthood. They were the ones who were to offer sacrifice in the temple, not only to do that, but to also be the ministers, to be the cantors, the musicians, and so forth. And so the book of Hebrews makes clear that it is not the um, the blood of bulls and goats and the heifer and the ashes of a heifer that uh, sanctify the people and take away sin on the day of atonement, but it is the cross of Christ, the one perfect sacrifice, the the passion and death of Christ that takes away our past, our present, and our future sins. Um, in the Sacra Sanctum Concilium from Vatican II, it says that the Last Supper on the night he was betrayed, our Savior instituted the Eucharistic sacrifice of his body and blood. He did so in order to perpetuate the sacrifice of the cross throughout the centuries, that he should come again and to entrust to his beloved spouse, the church, a memorial of his death and resurrection, a sacrament of his love, a sign of unity, a bond of charity, a paschal banquet in which Christ is consumed, the mind is filled with grace and a pledge of future glory is given to us. So one of the things that we think about in the early church is, or in the church today even, um, is what is the Eucharist? Um, and today we have basically four thoughts on the Eucharist. It is uh, a change in the uh, bread and the wine, which become the body and blood of Christ, a permanent change. We think about um, the, would say it's the real presence, um, but maybe or maybe not a permanent change, uh, spiritual presence of Christ, uh, or a memorial presence, simply a memorial. All it is, the bread and the wine, we do it in memory of Christ. Uh, or the bread and the grape juice, we bring it out in memory of Christ. And so one of the things that we do is we can take a look at the New Testament, but the New Testament, again, has can be taken certainly to help uh, the position of a permanent change, but not really uh, fully. Um, and the reason why is that you take a look at John chapter 6, where Jesus says that, you know, that I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. That my blood is true drink. My flesh is true food. Um, but uh, people would say that, well, that's to be taken symbolically. So in other words, Jesus says he's the gate or the door. That doesn't mean he's a giant gate or a door that lets the sheep uh, in and out. Um, that he is the light of the world. That doesn't mean that he's a bright star um, in coming down to earth. Um, so they would say to be take it symbolically. Um, also, you have the Last Supper, but again, you could probably take the Last Supper as being symbolic. You could also take um, even uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, where he says that some of you are uh, becoming sick because you're not um, eating worthily uh, the, the, uh, the, the body and blood, that you're not eating worthily the, uh, the elements of the Eucharist. Um, but again, you can take, even take that uh, symbolically. So again, what we think about is that there are four thoughts on the Eucharist. One is, is that the idea of a permanent change, um, Catholics think about it in terms of transubstantiation, uh, which was developed by St. Thomas, Thomas Aquinas in the 1200s, um, that the uh, elements of bread and wine be, truly become the body and blood of Christ. It's a permanent change. Um, the uh, people in the Orthodox Church um, believe that it is a permanent change, but they don't uh, go into the details that the Catholic Church does, uh, but they do believe, certainly believe in a permanent change. And then you have the, uh, the Lutherans who believe that Christ is there present in the Eucharist, in and through the Eucharist, but it's not a permanent change. 
Um, you have the Anglicans and the Episcopalians, some who believe in the Lutheran position, some who believe in a permanent change. In fact, there's telling the students um, at St. Andrew's School that I had a, um, there was a parish in St. Mary's County that had a tabernacle. It was, a, it was an Anglican church, but it had a tabernacle. So again, the idea of permanent change. Um, there's also the uh, Reformed Church and the Presbyterian Church that Christ is spiritually present when the gifts of bread and wine or bread and grape juice are brought out, um, but there's no permanent change in the bread or wine or grape juice. Um, and then the Baptist Church and the Pentecostal Church believe in simply a memorial that there is no change in the bread and the grape juice, that it's simply that uh, memorial. Uh, and so what they'll do is that if you can look um, beyond just the New Testament readings to what did the early church believe. Now, certainly some will say, well, they said it was a memorial. And I think the one thing is, is that nobody denies that it is a memorial. Nobody denies that it is a memorial. Um, but is it more? Is it a memorial plus? And so when you look at some of the writings of the early church fathers, whether Irenaeus or whether St. Uh, Ignatius of Antioch, um, that you will see the, uh, the idea that the church truly believed that it was, that Jesus was truly present, not in, uh, not in bread and wine, but in uh, the, his body and blood there on the church. Um, and so we have from uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch, it says the following, they, they being the Gnostics, absent themselves from the Eucharist and from prayer because they do not confess that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the flesh which suffered for our sins and which the Father in his goodness raised up. They who, were the, who deny this gift of God are persisting in their disputes. Um, so St. Ignatius of, of Antioch wrote this in about 106. He was a disciple of the Apostle John. Um, and so um, there is a uh, Protestant theologian, early church historian, uh, J.N.D. Kelly, who says the following, the Eucharistic teaching should be understood at the outset was uh, unquestionably realist. That is, the consecrated bread and wine was taken to be and was treated and designated as the Savior's body and blood. So again, what we see from the early church till the present is this idea that, that once they have the Eucharistic prayer, once we call down the Spirit to change, to transform the gifts of bread and wine, once we have the words of institution, the words that Christ spoke at the Last Supper, they truly become the body and blood of Christ. Thanks and God bless.